Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly9078, and today I'm building Sheev Palpatine. For a bit of background, Sheev was a senator in the Galactic Senate from the planet Naboo. Unbeknownst to his supposed allies, however, he was secretly a Sith Lord, who manipulated events to go as he wished, leading to the rise of the Empire. Oh, wait, did I say we were doing Palpatine? I meant Jar Jar Binks, sorry. All that background stuff is still true, though. So, what do we want from this build? Well, as a Sith Lord, we need Force Powers. We'll get the standard suite of tricks, but we especially need Jar Jar's specialty, Mental Manipulation. We can also use the Force to augment our physical abilities and help us out in a fight, though since we're disguised as the Comic Relief, it'll need to look like an accident. On that note, we're disguised as the Comic Relief, so we need to be good at hiding our true intentions and looking harmless. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be using the standard point array. If you want to roll for stats, that's fine. Just make sure your dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are high enough to multi-class. We'll start off with a 10 in strength. Jar Jar's arms are skinny, but his legs are thick. Great for jumping and for acrobatics, so dexterity is going to be 14. We'll dump constitution, where the comic relief, we shouldn't be getting in fights in the first place. But intelligence will be 15, so we can skeeve and connive behind the scenes. We'll make Wisdom 13, so we know when to tone down the clowning, and a 12 in Charisma will make our clowning convincing, as well as making sure our scheming and conniving, or skinniving, stays behind the scenes. Now Gungans are vaguely frog-like, so I could use Grung for Jar Jar and make him a Grungan, but Grung dry out really quick, and Jar Jar spent a good couple of days on Tatooine no problem, so we'll go with Simic Hybrid instead. That'll bump our Constitution to 10, and round up our Wisdom to 14 as well as giving us 60 feet of dark vision and two animal enhancements, one now and one at 5th level. We'll take Underwater Adaptation now, giving us a swim speed and letting us breathe underwater, and at 5th level we'll get Acid Spit, since the Gungans do canonically have special spit that they can shoot out from a distance. Number of times per day equal to our constitution modifier, we can spit acid at a creature or object within 30 feet, dealing 2d10 acid damage if they fail a dexterity save based on our constitution. I'm going to tell you right now that we won't be investing in Constitution at all this build, so that save DC is pretty low, but we do get to use it the minimum of once per day, and the damage increases as we level up to a max of 4d10 at level 17. Just maybe aim it at objects for the most part, they tend to not have great dexterity. We'll build our own background for proficiency in Persuasion and Perception, then we'll start off as a Monk for proficiency in Athletics and Religion since the Force tends to be treated as just one big religion. Our Force Sensitivity makes our AC 10 plus our Dexterity and Wisdom modifiers while we aren't wearing armor, and we learn Martial Arts, letting us use Dexterity for the attack and damage rolls of our unarmed strikes and monk weapons, use a D4 for their damage, and make an unarmed strike as a bonus action after taking the attack action. Second level Sith Monks can harness the Force with Ki. Step of the Wind is the most obvious Force power, as we can disengage or dash as a bonus action, moving unnaturally fast and doubling our jump distance for the turn, then Patient Defense lets us dodge as a bonus action, and Flurry of Blows lets us make two unarmed strikes with our bonus action instead of the one that we normally get from our martial arts. Our speed is also boosted thanks to our force training, increasing by 10 feet while we are not wearing armor. Now if we need to look harmless and wear a monk, then what better way than to act drunk? Drunken Master Monks get proficiency in performance and with brewing supplies, and with the Drunken Technique, our speed increases by 10 feet, and we automatically disengage whenever we use our Flurry of Blows, to stumble around a battlefield, narrowly avoiding attacks and getting a few lucky shots in ourselves. And we can deflect missiles, reducing the damage from an incoming projectile by 1d10 plus our Dexterity modifier and Monk level as a reaction. Then if the damage is reduced to 0, we can spend a key point to throw the projectile back. Now most of the projectiles we face are Blaster Bolts, and we don't have a lightsaber, so we can't really catch them, but I see this as using the force to narrowly dodge and bring another battle droid into the path of the shot. With our first ability score improvement, we'll take the Skill Expert feat, bumping our Charisma to 13 and giving us both proficiency and expertise in Deception to really solidify our Harmless Act. We also get Slow Fall, reducing any falling damage we take by 5 times our Monk level, so we can make comedic pratfalls to throw off suspicion without hurting ourselves. At 5th level, our martial arts die bumps up to a d6, we can make a second attack with our attack action, and we can spend a key when we hit with a melee attack to try to stun the target if they fail a constitution save, 
thanks to Stunning Strike. And at 6th level, our bond with the force deepens further, letting all of our unarmed strikes bypass damage resistances as if they were magical. Our speed also increases by a further 5 feet while we're unarmored, and with Tipsy Sway, we can leap to our feet from prone with only 5 feet of movement, and we can redirect melee attacks. When a creature misses us with a melee attack, we can spend a key as a reaction to make the attack hit a different creature within 5 feet, as we desperately scramble to avoid attacks and end up unwittingly causing damage. Force jumping over to Wizard now for greater force powers. Message is short range telepathy, Mage Hand is weak telekinesis, and Friends gives us advantage on all charisma checks against a creature for up to a minute for a little Jedi mind trick. The creature does know we use magic on them afterward though, and might become hostile. Jump, Longstrider, and Featherfall use the force to triple our jump distance, increase our speed by 10 feet, and float ourselves down from high places. Chromatic Orb throws a ball that deals 3d8 of our choice of acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder damage on a hit. I would say lightning is probably the most in character, make it one of those little plasma balls the Gungans use against the battle droids. Charm Person is another Jedi mind trick, charming a humanoid who fails a wisdom save for an hour, though again they know about it afterward. As always, keep in mind that charming is not mind control. Charming just means that the charmed creature can't attack us or target us with harmful spells, and that we have advantage on checks made to interact socially with them. Wizards also get Arcane Recovery to restore spell slots on a short rest. Once per day, we can regain a number of spell slots with total level equal to or less than half of our wizard level, none of which can be higher than 5th level. Since we're focusing on Jar Jar's mind control abilities, we'll join the School of Enchantment at 2nd level. We are an enchantment savant, meaning that it takes half the time in gold as normal to copy down an enchantment spell to our spellbook, and we have a hypnotic gaze. As an action, we can hypnotize a creature that we're next to. If they fail a wisdom save, they're charmed for a turn, their speed drops to zero, and they're incapacitated. We can keep them hypnotized with our action, but the effect ends if we move away, if they can't hear or see us, or if they take damage. There's actually no limit on how often we can hypnotize people, but if your creature passes their save or the effect ends on them, we can't hypnotize that creature again until we take a long rest. At third level, we get the most accurate Jedi mind trick spell with Suggestion. Suggesting a course of action we want a creature to follow, like not inspecting our speeder and letting us go on our way. If the creature fails a wisdom save, they follow that suggestion to the best of their ability as long as it sounds reasonable and isn't actively harmful to them. Thought Shield and Nistal's Magic Aura help us conceal our presence from the Jedi we travel with. Thought Shield lasts 8 hours without concentration and prevents our mind from being read or detected. We also can't be contacted telepathically unless we want to be and we have advantage on saves against effects to determine if we are telling the truth. Nistal's magic aura lasts a full day without concentrating, and can make us appear to be completely non-magical, as well as changing what our alignment registers as to things that can detect that. Plus, if we cast the same Nistal's magic aura on ourselves every day for a full month, it lasts until it's dispelled, which, thanks to our deception skills, shouldn't even be something anyone thinks to try. Jar Jar is a member of the Galactic Senate, which means, technically, he is a diplomat. The Diplomat feat rounds off our Charisma to 14, bumps our Persuasion to an Expertise, and lets us charm people just by talking to them. If we spend a minute talking to a creature, we can make Persuasion versus their Insight. If we succeed, they're charmed for as long as they're within 60 feet of us, and for one minute after they aren't. Now remember, charming means we have advantage to interact with them socially. That doesn't just mean on Persuasion checks. That includes Deception, Intimidation, even Performance potentially. So this could very easily be flavored as them just thinking that we're good, earnest, and harmless, if a little bit bumbling, so they won't look too deep into what we say and take it at face value. We'll take Thunderclap to deal up to 4d6 thunder damage to any creatures next to us who fail a constitution save, and it wouldn't be a Sith build without Lightning Bolt, so we'll pick that up at 5th level, blasting a line of lightning 100 feet long and 5 feet wide. Creatures in the area have to make a dexterity save or take 8d6 lightning damage, half on a success. Fun fact, I say it wouldn't be a Sith build without lightning bolt, but Darth Vader actually can't use force lightning because of his metal robot arms. The flip side of lightning bolt is of course protection from energy, which gives us resistance to our choice of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for up to an hour. Pick lightning so you can stick your face in the electrical discharge of a couple of pod racing engines and come away with nothing more than a numb tongue. 6th level enchantment wizards get instinctive charm. Now the logic behind this one is pretty similar to the logic behind deflect missiles or the drunken master's redirect attack, 
When a creature within 30 feet attacks us, we can use our reaction to force a wisdom save on them. If they fail, they have to attack the creature closest to them instead of us. If they succeed, we can't instinctive charm them again until we take a long rest. Charm Monster at 7th level is the same as Charm Person, but without the humanoid restriction. There are a lot of non-humanoid aliens in Star Wars, and this can even charm the bigger fish to eat the smaller fish that's eating us. Synchronicity is a neat little spell that harnesses the force to make things go our way. For up to an hour, we aren't affected by mundane delays, like traffic or waiting for an elevator. We can run straight through crowds, opportunity attacks against us have disadvantage, we can always find a convenient piece of cover giving us advantage on stealth checks, and we get advantage on any checks we make to drive a vehicle. Give this to Anakin before his big pod race to make sure he wins, that way we can take him with us and nudge him toward the dark side. Now thanks to our force powers we're already telekinetic, but at 8th level we'll pick up the telekinetic feat, bumping our intelligence to 16. We have mage hand already of course, but with this it becomes invisible, and the range increases by 30 feet. We can also try to force push or pull a creature with our bonus action, moving them 5 feet toward or away from us if they fail a strength save. For 5th level spells, Dominate Person works a lot like Charm Person, charming a humanoid who fails a wisdom save, but it only lasts up to a minute, and we can give the creature simple telepathic instructions that it follows as best it can. Also, we can use our action to take direct control of them, citing exactly what they do during their turn. Modify Memory charms and incapacitates a creature who fails a wisdom save. While the spell lasts, we can alter their memory of an event that happened in the last day, though we can't alter more than 10 minutes. We can change details, create a new memory, make them forget the event entirely, or even just have them remember it in perfect detail. At 10th level, we learn how to split our enchantments, so if we cast an enchantment spell of at least 1st level that targets exactly one creature, we can have it target a second creature as well. So that'll double up on Charm Person, Charm Monster, Dominate Person, Suggestion, Modify Memory. We actually have a lot of enchantment spells. Our last cantrip takes our Force Lightning and puts it in a handshake with Shocking Grasp, which deals up to 4d8 lightning damage on a hit and stops the target from taking reactions for a turn. We even have advantage on the attack roll if the target is wearing metal armor, so this is great for dealing with droids. The last spell we're going to pick up is Mass Suggestion. It works exactly like Suggestion, but it lasts for 24 hours without concentration and affects 12 creatures. I'm sure Naboo does have diplomatic allies, but there are sure to be some who are on the fence about granting our pal friend Patine emergency powers, so this can maybe help us sway the Senate. We get one more ability score improvement, I would say bump intelligence to 18 for higher save DCs, but I could see going for charisma to be more deceptive, or even wisdom for a little bit better AC, and 13th level gets us access to 7th level spells, but I don't want any, so the real draw here is actually just the 7th level spell slot, which we can of course use to upcast our spells. Charm Person, for example, can target 7 creatures with 7th level slot, Dominate Person lasts for up to a full hour, and Modify Memory can change a memory that happened up to a full month ago. Our capstone is the 14th level of the School of Enchantment for Alter Memories. When we charm one or more creatures with an enchantment spell, like, say, Charm Person, we can choose one creature that the spell targeted to not know they were charmed when the spell ends. Also, once before the spell ends, we can force the creature to make an intelligence save. If they fail, we can make them forget some of the time they spent charmed, up to a number of hours equal to 1 plus our Charisma modifier though not any time before the spell actually started, of course. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, we're pretty good at diverting damage away from ourselves. We have three different ways to reduce or redirect attacks with our reaction, plus ways to avoid fall damage and to disengage to avoid opportunity attacks. We're also incredible in social situations thanks to our persuasion and deception expertises, not to mention our outright mind control that the person we control won't notice or even remember happening. And this isn't hugely important to the character concept, but we have pretty good mobility options too, and those are always good, thanks to our unarmored movement, our jumping boosts, and our underwater adaptation. On the other hand, the majority of our stuff is outright useless against creatures that can't be charmed, or that are good at wisdom saves, both of which are pretty common. We're also pretty multi-ability dependent. Since with our need to be deceptive, we could almost consider Charisma a fourth requirement, on top of our multiclassing minimums. And finally, those attack redirecting abilities are great, but we only get one reaction per turn, and we desperately need them to shield our extremely squishy 80 HP, which I think is the least HP of any character I've made so far on this channel. So, full disclosure, I was like, 
I don't know, nine or ten back when Phantom Menace came out, and I really liked Jar Jar. I was a kid, and I thought he was funny. I honestly never got what all the hate was surrounding him, but then I guess I was never as into Star Wars as a lot of people. I absolutely love the Sith Lord Jar Jar theory, and I hope I did it justice. Really would have been cool to see him come back in the new trilogy, but alas, twas not to be. Oh well. So good being home! I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below. Leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can check the description for the link to my Patreon for access to the Discord channel and early access to future builds. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.